This is an overview of Parallax OS and DIME. DIME stands for Distributed Intelligent Managed Elements and was developed by Kawa Objects. What we'll see here in this PowerPoint presentation is the DIME Service Orchestrator as well as the machine running Parallax. This machine running Parallax has two DIMEs. Each DIME is run on an individual core of the machine. What we'll do is we'll send a program to one of the DIMEs on this particular machine. Uh, this program is a simple Hello World program that will send a keystroke from the keyboard and display it locally on the screen. The initial configuration, we've set this DIME to send its output to itself. We'll bring another machine running Parallax also with two cores, therefore two dimes. We'll distribute the same program to one of the dimes and begin its execution. We've also set the configuration that any output from the keyboard will also display on the local monitor attached to it. So we can see here both machines are sending keystrokes to themselves. What we'll do now within the DIME service management console is we'll send a modify command to one of the machines. We'll tell it that we want to switch the output to the other DIME running parallax. So we execute that switch and now the keystroke transfers over the network to the display on the remote machine. You can also enable that switch on the second dime and get it to send its keystrokes also over the network to the remote machine. This is the parallax proof of concept shown on actual hardware. We have three machines running parallax. The two machines on the left are Pentium Ds and the machine on the right is a dual core Celeron. Each machine has two cores, so in effect we have two dimes on each machine. This machine here is our orchestrator server, which is running Ubuntu Linux. If we take a look around the back, we'll see that each of the machines are wired together with standard ethernet. This particular dime host is running off of a compact flashcard We've already removed the compact flashcard from one of the Pentium D machines, as Parallax does not require a hard drive unless the application needs it. What we'll go ahead and do is take a look at the Hello World example program. It's a very simple program written in Assembler, which takes a keystroke from the keyboard, queries the dime parameters, and then sends the keystroke to the destination based on the parameters of the dime. We'll go ahead and start up the orchestrator server. What the orchestrator server will do on startup is do an initial discovery of any available dimes on the network. It also queries those dimes to see uh, their speed and also how much memory they have available. Also, the orchestrator server will initiate a heartbeat check of each of the available dimes to make sure that they are running normally. So we'll go ahead and refresh the Parallax web GUI and we'll see the available dimes. We'll go ahead and dispatch the Hello World program to dime number two. That's complete and we'll now modify the parameters of the program before it's actually been executed. We'll set dime number two to send the keyboard output to itself and we'll start up the execution of that program. We can see that the program is now running and if we type a key on the keyboard we'll see it display on the screen. We'll also see network activity showing that it is transferring and receiving. We'll go ahead and pick dime number five, Let's dispatch the same program to it, 
and also modify the runtime parameters before the program has actually executed. So we have it configured to send to itself. We'll start the execution and we can see it now running on the farm machine. Likewise, if we type a key on the keyboard, we can see it displaying on the monitor. Now what we'll go ahead and do is show the dynamic reconfiguration that is available within Parallax. We'll take dime number two and have it send its output to dime number five. That's complete. And we'll also adjust dime number five to set its output to dime number two. If we take a look at the one parallax machine, we can see there is a kernel message showing a modify was completed. If we type on this keyboard now, we can see that it is no longer displaying on the screen. Uh, we can see that there is transfer network activity and that the keyboard output is now being displayed on the remote machine. We can also type on this keyboard here. Also does not display locally. It displays on the remote dime. So this shows dynamic reconfiguration that is available within dime and parallax. What we'll do now is we'll take things a step further and show the fault tolerance that is built into Parallax and the orchestrator. We're going to simulate a hardware failure on this machine currently running a program. It's off now. If we take a look at the orchestrator, we'll see that it has detected that two of the dimes have failed. It has found a replacement dime, redistributed the program, redistributed the parameters, and started the execution on that dime. It's also taken a look at any other dime on the network that was referencing the machine that has failed and updates its parameters as well to give it the address of the replacement machine. So we can see the program is now running on the middle machine. We can take a look here and we'll see that if we type on the keyboard, the keystroke will show up on the left machine. And if we type on the left machine's keyboard, we'll see the keystroke display on the right. We'll go ahead and restart the failed computer. If we refresh the Parallax web GUI, we can show that the two dimes have failed. Parallax has completed its boot up. As Parallax is written in assembler, boot up time after the power on self test is about a less than a second. We can manually send a heartbeat to dime one and it will be in an idle state again. We can also resend the manual heartbeat to dime number two, and it is now back on the network. This concludes the Parallax and Dime proof of concept. Thank you very much for watching.